Hello and welcome to Studio West in San Diego, California, the home base of Drum Ambition, and welcome to your first video lesson. In today's lesson, I'm going to talk you through playing a basic pop and rock drum beat. These are also known as eighth note grooves, and I'll explain what that means in just a few minutes. So I'm going to take you through to the studio and I'm going to walk you through step by step the process. There is also a downloadable PDF file which has all the individual components of what we're about to play. And you'll also see the notation on the screen. Let's go through to the studio. Let's have some fun. So let's talk about these eighth note grooves that we're about to play. These form the basis of very common and popular pop and rock tunes. So they're very, very important grooves. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is talk about how to count them. And then I'll show you how to play them on the drum set. So the first thing to understand is they're chord eighth note grooves because there's eight notes in the bar. And we count them one and two and three and four and. Now, really important here, we don't count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you'll see why in a few minutes when we start to put it together. So the first thing we're going to do is take your right hand and we're going to play on the hi-hat and we're going to play every eighth note. Keep it slow, count out loud, that's really important. And I'm going to play two bars, two measures for you. Remember, bars and measures are the same thing. Here we go. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and now i know we're really early on here but it's a good idea to take a moment take a pause and practice that because counting out loud and playing is your first uh, your first lesson in coordination very important so the next thing we're going to do is add the snare drum on the two and the four. This is going to be our left hand, so our right hand's going to rest, but we're going to stay in the playing position. And again, if we count out loud, we keep it slow. It's going to sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Again, I played two bars for you there. So take a moment and practice that. And then when you're ready to move on, you can start thinking about adding the bass drum. So now we're ready to add the bass drum and we're gonna add the bass drum on the one and the three. Now, when you're playing the bass drum, it's very, very important to remember the technique that you learned. And we talked about that in the posture and setup video. So be sure to refer to that if you need to. So we're going to play the bass on the one and three. It's going to sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and your hands are rested. They're not doing anything at that point. They're just staying in the playing position. Now take a moment and practice those three individual parts, hi-hat, snare, bass, and then when you're ready, we'll try and put them all together. When we do that, playing slowly, it's gonna sound like this. One and two and three and four and 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 and notice there how i played four bars a time or four measures of time now, if you tried that, and like most people, it was very difficult for it all to come together first, then don't worry. Try perhaps playing with the hi-hat and the snare first. So the hi-hat on every eighth beat, um, snare drum on two and four, just rest your right foot until you're ready to bring it in. It's quite common, and this is going to be challenging the first time you play it. Now, just so you can see, I'm going to play this a little faster for you, uh, just so you can see where we can take this. It's going to sound like this. One, two three, four, one, two, three, four. And 
And again, that was four bars of time there, or four measures of time. And if you want to hear it just a little bit faster for reference, one, two, three, four. Now, I demonstrated it faster for you there just so you can get an idea of where you can take this beat. But I have to say it's really, really important in these early stages to keep it slow. Um, speed is nothing but a byproduct of control, and you have to build the control first. Um, and another thing is timekeeping is really, really, it's, it's the most important thing that we do playing the drums. If we can't keep a steady, consistent beat, then it doesn't matter if we have the best technique in the world. It's really the most important thing. So be mindful to keep it slow, count out loud, do all those good things, and that will help you along the way. So while we're talking about timekeeping, um, some common mistakes that people make when they're playing these beats for the first time, and the first is not counting out loud. And at the risk of repeating myself, and you will hear me say this a lot in these videos, it's super important to count out loud. It's important because, well, number one, it helps the brain coordinate which limb is playing which note. Um, when you count out loud, you can hear if you're making a mistake. So for example, you might be counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, instead of one and two and. And it might seem a small thing, but if you do that, you're placing the snare drum on beat three and seven. And you don't really want to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for example. So there's also lots of benefits in counting out loud when you're reading and learning to read music. And you really should watch the reading notation videos of Drum Ambition for that also. The other thing I mentioned is speeding up. Be careful not to speed up. Try and stay at the tempo that you started at. As people become excited and as they become more competent on these beats, there is a tendency to start at one speed and speed up. And again, as I said to you a few moments ago, timekeeping is our number one priority. And then one other thing to watch out for is when you're playing this beat for the first time, if you miss a snare on the two and four, or you miss a bass drum on the one and three, it really doesn't matter. Keep playing, but what you shouldn't do is try and add the beat if you've missed it. For example, let's say I miss the snare on the two and four, and I go one and two and three and four and... So as you can see, I missed the beat on the four, but I tried to add it. Well. Music is continuous, so if you've missed a beat, the moment's passed, don't try and add it, it doesn't matter, you'll get it on the next time round. So now we're going to go back to the control room and I'm going to give you some hints on how to practice. We're also going to talk about bringing the metronome in and how important that is and uh, give you some more hints on how to develop these grooves. So I hope you found that video interesting and informative. Let's talk a little bit about how we're going to practice. Now the first thing is, just spend time working on the coordination, playing slow, counting out loud, everything we talked about in that video. And eventually you'll feel happy with playing those basic eighth note grooves. That will take some time, but the good news is that 15 minutes of focus practice per day will give you some good results. And if you can do more, great, but do try and look at this at least 15 minutes per day. Now when you're ready, with the emphasis of when you're ready, we're gonna use this metronome. Now, a metronome, you can use a physical metronome like this, you can use a smartphone application, or there's metronomes online as well. And the metronome measures music speed in beats per minute. So it's a good practice tool because it will help you develop good timekeeping, but you can also measure your progress as well. So if you're at 50 beats one week, and then you go up to 55 beats per minute another week, and then you're up to 60 beats per minute, you can see the progress. So I recommend that you start at 50 beats per minute. That's one and two and three and four and. And remember, the metronome is giving you quarter notes. So make sure that you're counting in eighth notes like we talked about in the video. One and two and three and four and. Now at first the metronome is going to seem like a distraction, so don't use it until you feel that you're absolutely ready. But when you do feel ready, by all means use it. 
Now, don't forget that you have your downloadable PDF, the glossary of terms, and if you still need help, remember I'm here for you, support at drumambition.com. Please feel free to email me. And in the next lesson, we're going to talk about how we can add some extra bass drum notes to your eighth note pattern to give you some more musical options. In the meantime, have fun with your practice. Thanks for checking in, and thanks for using Drum Ambition. <laughs>